Coach Dungey almost cursed at a practice. He caught himself. He didn't let it out, but we knew where he was going with that. That's the first time we knew Coach Dungey could actually get mad at somebody. That's the untold story of Coach Dungey. What happened and what did he almost say? Well, we wasn't locked in the way we should at practice, and um, I won't reveal what he was about to say, but I just, just know that it wasn't a word that's normally in his vocabulary. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> As Reggie Wade earlier this week, telling stories about his coach in Indianapolis, Tony Dungy, and work done, same thing, Tampa Bay. Practice, guys weren't getting it done, and coach got a little upset, and it got everyone's attention because coach almost said something that they never heard coach say. You know, it's funny. I, I, I remember those two incidents, but... I wasn't really as the, the time that I actually got mad and really blew off some steam. My first year in Tampa, we had two guys on Tuesday miss appointments. Reagan Upshaw was supposed to be at a, an elementary school. He forgot. Um, Eric Rett was supposed to be at an autograph signing. He was 45 minutes late. And that's, that's when they actually heard it. <laughs> <laughs> you let yeah. one out that day? You did? You, you, we cannot do this, and we're not going to win. Oh, oh, there we go. He, he, he couldn't resist. He scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Holy cow. You know we're live right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah don't good. worry it's about it, though. Better. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but, so it was practices where yeah, they just – the energy wasn't right. Things were messing up. Concentration wasn't there. Right. And uh, I, I would only say, hey, we got to be about winning. And so I don't know what word they thought was coming out, but it was all about winning. Right. <laughs> all right, well, Coach Dungy's going to stay with us here for a while. Rodney Harrison, as you may have seen, is here. He, he doesn't want to wait his turn. He wants to come on right now, but we don't have space for him. And Tony Dungy gets priority over Rodney Harrison, so we're going to spend some time with Coach as we get you ready for Super Bowl 54, and it is a Friday edition of Pro Football Talk Live, NBC Sports Radio, NBCSN. Hello to our good friends in the U.K. and in Ireland enjoying the program on Sky Sports. Hour number two of a four-hour extravaganza day, Hall of Fame head coach Tony Dungy. Coach, uh, yeah, we've had a fun week, and we were talking earlier about how both work done and Reggie Wayne told us some stories about their time with you. But obviously, anybody who's ever encountered you has nothing but the highest praise, and uh, they, they just they, there's a glow that comes over them when they talk about their time with you. Well, and those are my guys, too. And, and that's the thing. People say, hey, what did you miss? What did you take from it? Those relationships and those guys, I remember work done coming in as a 21 year old and saying, you know, we're talking about giving back to the community, being part of Tampa. And he's, I, I want to do something. I want to do something special. I want to honor my mom. And, and you don't know what that's going to be, uh, but it ends up being 174 houses for single moms. And uh, John Lynch, who's uh, with the 49ers now, hey, I want to do something too. And it's scholarships for worthy students in the Tampa area. Right. And when you see guys go from hey, I just want to be on the team, I just want to start, I want to win a Super Bowl too. I want to do something different. It's it's a thrill. It really is. Yeah, well, it's a tribute to you, Coach. I mean, uh, some of those guys you had on those teams, they're just great people, and that's because of you. And uh, I know I witness it every week, and I probably bring down your profile as a human being on a weekly basis. But you know what I'm always amazed by too, Coach, is just that – you know, great coach, you're awesome, you're a communicator, all that. But, like, the real fact of the matter of how you, the person, motivated people on the team. Like, I know I've had coaches where I didn't want to let my coach down. And how many times your ex-teammates have said to me, like, he was a guy that I was going to do the little things during the week and at practice because they didn't want to let you down. They were all about that. And I just – I had to say that, and uh, you just got a magical way about you that way. You really do. Well, thank you. And that, that's what we tried to create. And it's interesting, John Lynch, when he went to San Francisco, uh, we were on the phone, and he talked about – creating the culture. He said, we want to create a culture out here of winning, and that's what I want to do. And I said, John, well, you, you know how to do that. Get the right guys in, demand that excellence, right. and you're going to be fine. And that, that's what they've done. Yeah, they have. Have you had a chance to talk to John as the Super Bowl approaches? I have, and uh, he's, he's a little nervous, and I keep telling him, I, I have a feeling, and everyone thinks it's going to be a close game and a great game, and I, I hope it will be, 
But when the Bucks went to the Super Bowl, I talked to John and I said, "You guys are you're gonna blow the Raiders out because they haven't seen a defense like, like this. this." Right. And John was like, "Oh no, don't say that, don't say that." But it was it was this high-powered offense: Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, Charlie Garner, Rich Gannon. They're right. throwing the ball all over the place, and the Bucks came in. I, I think people didn't expect to they see did, that. They, they did. shut them down. You're right. I remember watching the game on TV and going, "Whoa." The Bucks look like they're in fast forward, and the the Raiders look like they're in yeah. slow motion. Yeah. And over, and I know that, you know, I, I I think there is some sentiment out there where, I feel like it's a, it could be a close game, but I think if everybody thinks it's going to be a blowout, it will be the 49ers that kind of just overwhelm the Chiefs. Yeah, and, and you and feel that way too with, just that, with the defense that and the run game. That defensive front, uh, they're so big and fast and agile, and Patrick Mahomes has been able to create on everybody that he's played against, right. especially in the playoffs. I don't know if he's going to have time to create in yeah. this game. We'll see. Yeah. Well, and that really is the key. And I agree with you, Coach, because there's this perception that teams are so evenly matched, it feels like just one fluke here, one big play there, and one team's going to get broken. And Dan Marino was talking about that earlier in the week because Super Bowl 19, the Dolphins and the yeah. 49ers, we thought, hey, it's going to be a great game down to the wire. Well, the Dolphins got snapped early by the 49ers, and it just all falls apart. And that's another one. Uh, I picked that game wrong. We had played both teams in the 84 season. Right. And the Dolphins blew us out twice with just Marino and just unbelievable passing. It just seemed like they couldn't be stopped. And we beat the 49ers, gave them their only loss, and we slowed Montana and those guys down. So I'm thinking – this high-powered offense, they're, they're going to outscore San Francisco. But the San Francisco defense uh, was underrated, and, and they made the difference, and they, they slowed the Dolphins down and kind of won the game handily. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, boy, San Francisco has a great offense. Kansas City has a great offense. Kansas City has a good defense, but San Francisco has a, a great, great defense. defense right. And I'm just wondering why Kansas City's favored by a couple of points when you look at it that I, way. It's because of this big guy that's wearing the one and five yeah, jersey over here, right? Superman He's the quarterback, and you can't, can't stop him, stopped. right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm always interested. To just like take us into what it's like being the head coach on a Friday of the Super Bowl. Like, what were you? What, what were you nervous at that point, or were you just wanted the game to get here? What What were the feelings? I stayed in, in my normal routine. Uh, my boys uh, were really young at the time. And so we went to the NFL experience. Awesome. <laughs> and we did what I normally do on Fridays, take the family out. And so Friday afternoon, we're at the NFL experience, and people are looking. I would have been like, said, what? That looks like the head coach. <laughs> what is he Nicole? doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, so we're having fun. Friday night, we went to the gospel presentation. But all our work was done. But I, I tell you, I can sympathize with Sean McVay. Sean said last year, I think I overthought this whole process. Right. That can happen because you have your week at home. Yeah. We're in Indianapolis. You put in your game plan. You do everything just like you would in a normal week. And then you come down here and you repeat it. Right. And you start thinking, gosh, I don't want to leave anything out. I want to make sure I'm – and so you start overthinking. And I remember all week up in Indiana we had said – we're keeping the ball away from Devin oh, Hester. Please tell this. We're yes. kicking to the corners. We're practicing squib kicks. We're pooching it high. We're punting out of bounds. He's not going to touch the ball. And I get down here during the week, and I start thinking, this is a Super Bowl. We can't play scared. We can't do this. And then we have a chapel service about David and Goliath, and the chaplain says, you know, David ran right at Goliath. He wasn't scared. That was the difference. And I said, yeah, we're, we're playing scared. You know what? I come in. We're going to kick the ball. I hope we lose the toss. I hope we kick it right down the middle. We pound him, and they're going to know we mean right, business. Right, right. Set the tone. The worst decision. Crazy. <laughs> dumbest decision. But that was having a week too much to think about things. Right. Yeah, I took it to the house, and uh, it all worked out in the end, though, for the Colts that day in Miami. That rainy day. That was the other thing, too. You tell that story about oh. Peyton Manning, the weatherman, that week. We are looking at the weather reports, you know, two weeks ahead of time, 14 day in advance. And, yeah, it might rain. We need to practice with wet balls. It's Peyton, I live in Florida. There's been 40 Super Bowls. It's never rained before. But, he, no, I, we just need to do this. We practice with wet balls. Wow. And, sure enough, it rains the whole, the whole game. game. I know. Yeah. I was sitting in so, the crowd. But we were ready for it. We were prepared because that, that was Peyton. Leave no stone unturned. Yeah, well, what was his attitude for Super Bowl week? Because oh. it was such a big moment for both of you, like as far as legacy and everything, and people were riding him so hard at that time. He was into it. Uh, he wanted to play well, definitely wanted to win, and he took it to the nth degree again. He watched – 
every game of the Bears, all 16 games. He watched the three preseason uh, or three postseason, two postseason games. So right. he's watched all this. And then he tells Jim Sorge, our backup quarterback, I want you to watch their four preseason games to see if they did anything in the preseason that we haven't seen. I mean, he just was all, and, and I'm like, OK, just relax. We, we know these guys. You play against this defense right. every day in practice. You don't need to know right. any Similar more about scheme. it. They were playing Tampa, yep. too, just yep. like you. Right. But Re he was dialed in. Reggie told us a story about being over at Peyton's house at one point, and he's got a theater room. And he opens the door, and he's like, this looks like the meeting room <laughs> from the facility, all the way down to every detail, every single thing. It's the exact same room. It was. And I didn't, you know, I'm at that time, I don't know anything about Wi-Fi or any, any of that. He's got the exact hookup. Everything that Jim Caldwell and Tom Moore did, at practice in that meeting room could get transferred right to his house. So he got the game plans Tuesday night, hot off the presses. He got the cut ups, everything that we were going to see on Wednesday pumped right into his uh, basement. And that's the, that's the way he prepared. Did you ever feel like you had to like, like, like relax Peyton that he was, yeah, I mean, you, what, what was All your approach time. with doing that? You just, did you just talk we had to him? A, or? We had a seven year fight <laughs> over family Saturday. <laughs> I came from the Steelers organization Saturday. You brought your kids to practice. Right. It was when they could see where their dads worked. I'm sitting there holding John Stallworth's son when it's offensive period. He's holding my kids during defensive period, and that's what Coach Noel wanted. Right. So I go to Indy or Tampa, I put that in. I go to Indy, I put that in. <laughs> Well, his M.O. on Saturday was he had a yellow legal pad of every play that wasn't exactly perfect on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Holy He cow. wants to run them over on right. Saturday. Uh, right. So he's, you know, we're going to have 10 plays on offense. He's got 40 that he wants to run right. on Saturday. Right. So we compromise. Okay, show me your top plays. We'll run them again. Then he's, you know. I really need to run this at full speed. I don't need Marvin holding his son walking through the route. <laughs> so I'm with you on this. Can we just keep the kids maybe in the locker room? No, no. Hey, Family Saturdays won a lot of Super Bowls. We'll be okay. Yeah. So that was a battle. But like once a month. Fast forward when I started working for NBC, he's out in Denver now. And uh, they said, can you go out and do a story on Peyton for the opening game? So I go out there, Brandon Stokely, who also played for us, stops sure. me before I even get to the locker room. He said, you will never believe what Peyton did. Because now he's got twins. He said, he went to Coach Fox and said, we need to put in family oh, Saturday. I we need to get the he's kids, got kids out now. Here. Now he wants family day. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Coach Dungey's uh, with us here. Why don't we take a quick break? You're going to hang around. we got some I more will. time. I want to talk more about the X's and O's of the Super Bowl. We've talked about the Chiefs and the difficulties they may have. I'm fascinated by this San Francisco offense, this old school Miami Dolphins, Bob Greasy never throws the football that we've seen over the past six quarters of, of playoff football. We'll do that with Coach Tony Dungy when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.